Hello everyone. So today we're going to do an ADIME tutorial. So right over to your left is a example case study. Now this is a oversimplified case study, but that's okay. We get, we got to start somewhere. So let's start it easy. Okay. So this st case study is a 30, 34 year old male medical history, hypertension, type two diabetes and hyperlipidemia. His height is five foot 10 and weight is 250 pounds. Patient works nights, consumes meals two times a day before and after a shift. Food consists of fried foods, burgers, ice cream, and he plays golf one day a week. So from this information, um, you want to start your A portion, which, which is your assessment portion of the NCP. Okay, so the first thing what I start is the client history and that's that gray section um, in your assessment portion okay you'll find client history age gender sex um, this is patient client family medical history um, so this patient had hypertension hyperlipidemia and type 2 diabetes so so there is a it says cardiovascular so hypertension, hyperlipidemia, and type 2 diabetes is actually a part of uh, cardiovascular. So you can put that all together, or you can put other type 2 diabetes just like this. Body composition, measured height, weight, BMI. Now, a lot of times you won't see a BMI within your case study, but that's something that you'll always need to figure out for comparative standards. Then we wanna to go to energy intake. So from the information, does the patient have any nutrition information? Um, yes or no? If so, estimate intake. If not, don't state. And what I mean by that is, um, there's not gonna be a lot of information sometimes as far as like energy intake you might just need to say types of foods consumed were, um, you know, fat, and then you detail uh, what fat components in food did this person consume. Uh, so these are some examples. So on a typical day, this is just an example. On a typical day, AJ works nights, consumes meals, two times a day before and after shift, blah, blah, blah. We already stated this earlier. So from this information, it's not specific, but we can basically determine how many fat servings estimated in 24 hours, okay? We can also assess types of foods. Um, obviously all these foods are processed. And then what you would do is just, you know, I would put fried foods, burgers, ice cream, and I would put it right there, all right? Now, sometimes whenever you get your case study, it will be very specific, okay? So it will read like this. Based on a 24-hour recall, AJ consumes 3,000 calories a day of 250 grams a day of total fat and about 25% calories from sugar. So based on this information, um, you know, you can already tell the total fat. You can figure out how many calories are from the total fat by taking the grams, multiplying it by nine, and getting your kcals. And you can also get the calories um, from the sugar. So 3,000 calories a day times 0.25 will give your calories of sugar. Um, and always know what is the recommendation for sugar. Is this high or is this low? And that's something that you just generally need to know. Okay. So based on this information, you can gauge estimated energy intake in 24 hours because it's specific. The estimated energy intake is 3000 calories a day. And you can also estimate total fat estimated intake in 24 hours by the grams. So it already states it right here. So it makes your job really easy that you don't have to figure it out. Uh, you know, if you sometimes, let me scroll up. 
sometimes you will just get this and you'll have to figure out how many grams per day. And that's where you'll end up using your food exchange uh, to determine how many grams of food are in these servings, okay? So there we go. Total fat estimated in 24 hours grams, that's already given, or you have to figure, out, figure it out from the information above with your uh, food exchange. And in the back portion of your assessment, uh, this is something that I always do. I always find uh, ideal body weight. Um, so it's called weight and growth recommendations under comparative standards. And you'll want to figure this reference out. You know, if it's over 100, obviously the person is overweight. If it's under 100, then they're underweight. But I wouldn't ever say underweight. I would just say ideal body weight percent. So make sure to do that as a percent. Diagnosis. Now this is your nutrition diagnosis. From the information on the case study, what, what is the problem? What are you seeing that that is the problem with this patient? Um, obviously this patient is, a un, is not underweight, but I'm, that's just an example. Uh, is the patient overweight and obese? Yes. So uh, what is this patient doing that's causing him to be obese? Okay, he's eating at a restaurant, consumes, you know, processed foods, and he's not doing a lot of physical activity. He's only playing golf once a month and evidenced by his BMI and, you know, just make sure to assess your BMI and state what class and what weight he is. So that's, that's a quantitative, quantitative values for your evidence. And this is another problem, his diet. It could be excessive energy intake, excessive fat intake. Uh, you know, as I stated before, patient eats out at restaurants, uh, evidenced by his medical history and his total fat intake. Here's another problem, excessive mineral intake of sodium. Uh, patient consumes high intake of processed foods as evidenced by uh, medical history of hypertension. Uh, you can also estimate how much sodium per teaspoon a day this patient is consuming. And it could just be like a rough estimate. Um, inadequate fiber intake, obviously this patient is not consuming any, consuming any fruits and vegetables and his diet is not varied. So he obviously has inadequate fiber intake, um, you know, and you can put related to the same information. As you can see, you know, there's so many problems that a patient can have. All right, and here's another one, beliefs about food. Food and nutrition related knowledge deficit related to patient is consuming foods that are not recommended for cardiovascular disease as evidenced by medical history, type two diabetes, hyperlipidemia, hypertension, and then his weight and then his BMI. So probably on one of your first projects, you'll end up making a bunch of PMS, PES statements. Um, and then when, once you get to your capstone, you're just going to find like, you know, one or three problems and, you know, you won't have like 10 PES statements. You just find your best ones and your best ones are the ones that are going to make the most impact for this patient. So here I just have P is for problem, E is for etology and S is for sign and symptoms. And that is your PES statement. After your nutrition diagnosis, that's D, you'll go to your intervention. And that's where you'll see, uh, that's where you'll want to do your nutrition prescription. And that is what you would prescribe to the patient based on the problems. So like for each PES statement, problem number one, um, could be increase or decrease energy intake or, you know, decrease fat intake, you know. Uh, if it's energy, if so, how many kcals do you want to decrease? 
um, so the patient can manage his weight loss. Um, you can also estimate his energy intake uh, with a equation. So you know as far as what he should be consuming versus what he's consuming now. And then how much macronutrients per gram of your carbohydrates, your fat, and your protein. Um, so also, how is this patient going to keep track of this prescription? Um, how are they going to maintain uh, their goals? You know, things like that. I kind of put a food diary as an example. But also, we're in the electronic age, so people might just have, you know, uh, a program on their phone that they can uh, figure out, you know, how much calories are consuming a day or how much physical activity they're doing per day. Um, and then we would go on to problem two. What are you recommending to this patient? And you can kind of follow the same general uh, formula, but obviously you're not, you're not doing how many KCALs, but just kind of go through the steps. What is your prescription for this patient? And what is your prescription for each problem? And also, very important, so I want to star, make sure that these are obtainable goals for this patient. Okay, that's very important. Every single A-dime is for this individual. Okay, each and every, each and every A-dime, as I said before, is going to be very individual for that person. So therefore, the goals need to be obtainable specifically for that person for their life. Um, Nutrition education content, content related nutrition education. Uh, education on what? Uh, what information are you going to give to a client? Or what kind of education, like portion size education um, is just an example. Uh, what kind of diet are you going to recommend for this patient? Obviously this person ha is hypertension, uh, type two diabetes and hyperlipidemia. You know, you wanna educate on a heart healthy diet, but what does it consist of? You know, fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, low sodium. Um, you know, you wanna recommend a sodium reduction, but you also wanna provide alternatives like a uh, sea salt alternative or herbs and spices. Um, so how is this patient going to incorporate a healthy eating habits at home? For example, uh, easy meals in a crock pot because he's too busy. Uh, but you also want to educate or provide reference materials uh, such as recipes, I should say reference materials. No, I can't spell. All right. There you go. And what reference materials are you going to give patient? You know, my plate, heart healthy diet, uh, crock pot recipes, and physical activity guidance. This is something you should always give each and every patient. Uh, type of physical activity, uh, whether it's aerobic, resistance training, uh, how much time per week, you know? Uh, and also know their prior level of activity. You know, you can't just start them out on resistance, you know, some heavy lifting when they've never done that before. Uh, but you also want to give examples of types of exercises. Um, you know, walking around the neighborhood, um, doing lawn work, uh, stuff like that. Uh, make sure to recommend physical activity for this individual person that they can physically do, uh, not general, okay? Like doing exercises at home because they're busy, like I said, mowing the lawn, uh, gardening, um, cleaning the house, walking around the neighborhood. Uh, you may want to educate them as far as like where local gyms are, you know, things like that. Then you go to your nutrition counseling. So you want to be able to give two or three types of counseling for this patient. And you want to briefly describe why recommending this certain type of counseling 
uh, based on patient's actions. Okay, so you also must know what each type of counseling does. For example, what is cognitive behavioral therapy and how does that work for this patient? You know, like you're recommending cognitive behavioral therapy uh, because this patient, la, 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 that you fill in the blanks. So I have nutrition counseling based on self-monitoring, and that could be, you know, with a food diary. Uh, and we have nutrition counseling based on stress management. And then we go to the nutrition education application, all right? So this is a skill-related portion. Uh, so you need to do your short-term and your long-term goals. Your short-term goals, how will this patient achieve this goal? in the short term. And what is this goal? How will this patient document food intake? So those are the, those are the questions you need to think of and fill out uh, to complete this portion. Uh, Long-term goal, what is the overall goal? This does not have to be quantitative values. It can be, let's just say, smoking cessation, all right? You know, at this point, long-term goal is for him to be at a healthy BMI um, you know, not have hypertension, not diabetes or hyperlipidemia. That's, that's definitely a long-term goal. Uh, and referral to other providers. Now, um, have referral by nutrition professionals to other providers. Now, this is just one example. There are many examples in this section, okay? So with this example, referral referral to a nutrition professional to other providers. This means if there is a problem that is outside your scope of practice, for example, psychological, you know. Uh, and then we go on to your monitor and evaluation. Your food nutrition related history outcomes. What are you monitoring or, or evaluating for these problems? Now, this is a very oversimplified monitor and evaluation portion, but it's just an example. Uh, what are you monitoring? Their energy intake. By what number? By what time frame? How much energy intake are you monitoring? Uh, you know, 300 to 500 kcals a day, you're going to assess this and so time and evaluate um, patient is not meeting their goals, then, you know, you reevaluate and you explain. And then wait, you know, obviously this patient could be obese, you know, um, you look for weight changes and BMI changes. So you, you want to state that in there. And physical activity, um, evaluate, evaluate changes in PA physical activity at one time, at what time, all right? Anthropometric, like I just said, BMI, I mean, you can put it there too, but here's body mass index, you know, BMI of, you know, 35, um, monitor and evaluate for BMI changes, could be a healthy BMI, that's what you're looking for. And then your ideal reference body weight, uh, monitor reduction at what percent? And that's it. So that was my example for the A-dime. If you have any questions, just let Dr. Criscoll know, or um, you can also hit me up with uh, some questions if you like. I'm a little busy, but I can, I can answer some questions. Okay, have a good day.